It is the last Monday in April 2021. I hope summer is on the way. It snowed here in Ohio last week, so I'm definitely ready for it to be warmer. So today we're talking about gentleness. Gentleness grows in demanding soil, in the soil of demands. Gentleness is a willing to be um, humbled and to empty oneself. It is a, a humiliation that when you're humiliated, you respond in a sweet and um, a unresentful way. It was the disposition of the Son of God. Jesus gives gentleness as one of the Beatitudes on his Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount was probably the longest sermon that he gave. It probably lasted a few days. Huge crowds were starting to follow him. And, um, and just large masses of people were following him. And so you can imagine that the disciples started to get a, a little bit prideful. They started to feel a little superior because they were the inner circle. And Jesus takes a moment and he says, you know what, I think this is a good time to mentor you. And he did that a lot, didn't he? They didn't always get it, but he was trying. And so he takes this moment to mentor them. And he tells them that, you know what, the kingdom of God is not what you think. The kingdom of God is really upside down. You're thinking it's going to be about fame and fortune and me taking over Rome. No, the kingdom of God is about persecution, humiliation, giving, hunger. These are the things that will be rewarded. And so we need to remember that because we are his followers. We are his disciples. And we're kind, we feel blindsided when those things happen when he says to us, this is what's going to happen. Let's take a look at that beatitude. Oh, before we do, that's the nutshell. Here we did it. I did it right out the gate. Um, he's basically saying to them, you can't serve yourself and serve me too. You can't serve your self-interest and serve God too. That's the teaching moment that Jesus was trying to get the disciples to understand. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5.5 5. This is the beatitude and the fruit of the Spirit, not going to lie, that I've had the most difficulty understanding. The beatitude I've had understanding. The, the fruit I've had to let the Holy Spirit. i got small little buds of gentleness, not big fruit. And so um, anyone that knows me knows that. And why? Why has it been so difficult for me? There's a lot of reasons. So stick with me as I build up to how I've come to understand it and not feel like, oh, that's not me. Can't do that. One, I had, I'm not gentle by nature. I'm not, I'm not a gentle person. I'm a bull in a china shop. So that's one reason. Another reason is because gentleness is, um, it's just, it says they will be, the gentle will inherit the earth. I don't, why would I want to inherit the earth? I want to be out of this place. I'm ready to go to glory. And that's the thing with all the Beatitudes. They should be followed, each statement, by, and of such is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth, and of such is the kingdom of heaven. That's the first part of that I started to understand. You see, the Beatitudes are a code of conduct for believers. Believers are already citizens of heaven. These ethics are contrasting kingdom values, our eternal blessings, with worldly temporal values. And once I got that part, I was like, oh, I'm starting to understand this beatitude thing. They are blessed, which means they have joy and peace. We all want that, right? This is so much um, a contrast to what the world thinks. When they think of joy and peace, they think ha happiness and they think prosperity, which, and especially in a wealthy sense. And that is not what the kingdom of heaven is about. The meek of the earth already live in heaven because they have their roots in heaven. Hannah Hernard, who wrote Hind's Feet on High Places, one of my favorite, all-time favorite books, Hind's Feet on High Places, she, her second book 
to that was Mountains of Spices. And in Mountains of Spices, she's talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And she says this. She says that she compares it to lilies, us being in heaven but on earth, okay? Compares it to lilies where blossoms flow on top of the water. And we see the beautiful blossoms, but the roots that we don't see go down deep into a realm that we don't know, you know, that we can't see, that's not tangible to us. That's what it's like to be in this world, but also a citizen of heaven. That's where our roots are. Isn't that good? The meek of the earth have their roots in heaven. Once I understood that, I was like, started to understand that. I was, I was like, oh, I'm starting to get this gentleness thing a little bit. Well, Jesus announced that the kingdom of God was near. So people wanted to know, well, how can I be a part of this kingdom? The same people that knew the Old Testament. So he's saying the kingdom of God is near. He's telling the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. And he goes through this long um, teaching. And especially because the book of Matthew is written to Jews. And so you get a lot of these principles that the um, Jewish people would have known. And they would have known the Torah and the Old Testament. So each time he mentioned a Beatitude, they would automatically, which we don't, they would have automatically known, oh, in Psalms it says this, oh, the prophet Isaiah said this, they would have understood that. So gentleness, when Jesus was talking to them on that mountain, he, they would have automatically recalled probably this Psalm. Psalm 37, 8 through 11, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Do you hearing the same language, just in a different way? A little while, and the wicked will be no more. And they were hoping for that. They wanted the Romans to be gone. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek, the gentle, will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. He tells them by gentleness that they will inherit the land. This land that it belongs to them and the Romans have taken over. This land, but that's not what that's not what he comes to do, is it? He comes to give them himself. And the the place that they will inherit is heaven, and eventually there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Hard to understand. It's gentleness is gladly pouring oneself out. Oh, to say that to a Jew about pour yourself out to a Roman? What? So that, but when you do that, that's when you burst into fruitfulness. And that's the part I'm trying to learn, just to be honest with you. And that's the part that Christ showed us on the cross. That's exactly what he did. Well, Christ also describes his own disposition as gentle. In Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29, we, this is a verse that's very familiar to us. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Oh, wait, you're weary and burdened? That, why are you weary and burdened? Do you have excessive demands on you? Are those demands from sin? Are they from leaders? Are they from oppression, persecution, or simply weariness in your pursuit of God? Well, he says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. You'll find rest from those demands. This is to learn the secret of heaven. Gentleness, as it says on the screen, gentleness is self-giving and sharing even with those who demand all and give nothing in return. Those who take by force, even evil men who do what you don't want. They take advantage of the meekness of others. Now, let's stick with me. Okay, they're taking advantage of the meekness, but we have to understand what meekness really means. We saw it a little bit, all right, in the Beatitude. And now... We have to, we're seeing it. Jesus is saying, I'm meek. I'm gentle. Don't you want to be like Jesus? 
So it's hard to understand, and I'm going to get there. That's why it's been so difficult for me. Um, because it's the very opposite of self-assertion and self-giving, which is what our human nature wants in the begin to begin with. The Beatitudes and understanding the yoke, especially understanding that because I live around the Amish and I see it all year round, whether it's on the road or in the fields, I understand that burden that that animal feels under the yoke, that demand that the man is giving him. And so um, I, I, I have a picture of that, right? And in addition to that, there's been... Um, Sorry, I got distracted by my mouse. I hope that that's not recording that. Uh, there's been this, um, let me just say this and skip ahead in my notes. The real problem with gentleness, understanding gentleness, is because there isn't a good translation from the Greek. We, gentleness and meekness, timidity, those all have kind of a negative connotation or... Um, just like uh, you can't help it, that you, you can't help yourself. And that's exact opposite of what the Greek word means, praltes, means in the original language. So let me skip ahead here and um, because I just want to get to that. I mean, and that's, it's, but it is that gentleness, that timidity, if you will, that meekness that I do admire in other people. Because, I mean, I have a friend, Carrie Watts, and I just adore her because she exemplifies outwardly in disposition everything that I'm not. And I'm drawn to those people. But, um, well, my BFF, I don't know why I'm drawn to her because she ain't timid. Nope, 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 nope. Anyways, uh, so it's that, so I'm drawn to those people because it, it is. That's the quality we see, and that's good. But when it's saying, you know what? Turn the other cheek when it's saying, do you let, don't be self-giving and self-asserting and all of these things. We think, okay, well, I'm not going to be a doormat either. But this is why it's not the best trick. It's the best translation we have. But this is what praltes really means. This is what praltes really means. Um, it must be clearly understood. Let me see if I skipped anything. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I did or not. So it must, praltes, the spirit in which we accept God's dealings with us as good and therefore without disputing or resisting him. That is what, that's what I don't do. I'm like Jacob and I wrestle with God every time he tells me to do something. That's what he's saying. No, Deidre, that's, that's not being gentle. That, so it's this gentleness that's this disposition of God within us. Let me explain further. Stick with me. Gentleness is a fruit of power. Oh, it's a fruit of power. Because it's manifested and commended by God. The common assumption, like I said, is that it is something you um, can't help. You just can't help yourself. But that's not the case. The Lord was gentle. Jesus was gentle. He called himself gentle. And you know why he was gentle? Because he had the infinite resources of God at his command. And so do you and I. Jesus had to ascend so that the Holy Spirit could descend, so that we could perform our mission on earth until his return which is what to share the gospel with everyone to share jesus with everyone and so we have those same infinite resources at our disposal and therefore our disposition can be gentle when i realized what the original language was actually saying i was like oh I do want to be gentle. Oh, maybe I can be gentle. Still working on it. We all know this. If you know me personally, you know it. If you see me on here, you can tell it. So, but that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit is able to do that in us. That's the power that he endues us with. And he helps us to grow in those fruits. It's a fruit of power. 
And that's probably why um, Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. He is near to you. He has it. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Jesus lives inside of you. Walk in it. Your gentleness can be evident to all. Not just those who are nice to you, but those who are not so nice to you. Those people that irritate you. Those people who might persecute you. And that's what we see in our history hero this week. Our history hero experienced this in 2016. So his, we have a modern day he history hero to that February. Uh, I don't think I wrote the date, but it was February. Maybe I have it on there. Oh, yeah. February 7th of 2016. Pastor Kabir um, was leading a Bible study in a prayer meeting and he was taking a bus home. He lived in India. He, he would lead. He had a church in the slums of India. Okay, and so he would take a bus then and go home and he had his wife and two daughters with him and he's traveling by bus and about three miles before his stop, um, these guys come up and they halt the bus and they were from the a youth militia that's in Indi, India that's called the Hindu Yava Vahini. I might be saying that a little bit wrong, but they stopped the bus and they kidnap him. And they took him to this abandoned building and they told him that you must deny Christ or, you know, we're going to hurt you. And of course, he said, no way. And that's what this militia does. This youth militia, they try to forcibly get people to return to Hinduism. And that's exactly what they did to Pastor Kabir. They brutally beat him and they hit him over the head with uh, the knife handle and they and Kabir said he pleaded with God to spare his life. He pledged to serve him more zealously if God would let him live. And so as he, he laid there and he was bleeding and in pain, one of the attackers started to record him with a smartphone. And they ordered him to renounce Christianity and return to Hinduism and worship its idols. And this is what he said to them. He said, I am not going to worship idols. I serve the Lord only. I am not. I serve Jesus only. So the men beat him more and demanded of him some more. And again, of course, he refused the examples. That's why he's our history hero. I'm going to get emotional. Um, and so after an hour and a half of this attack, and he and he, they're like, you must denounce Christ. And he refused to. And some people would say that's stubbornness. You know what I would say it is? I'd say it's gentleness. It's letting your gentleness be evident to all. They demanded of him and he refused to give in to the demands because the fruit of the spirit, gentleness, was, among, it was in him, was in him. He recalls them saying, you are supposed to be a Hindu. You are converting everybody to Christianity here. Tomorrow, if I see you holding a Bible again, I will kill you, is what one of the attackers said. And they burnt his Bible and they took off. Well, he was able to miraculously get to somewhere where he could call a friend. And that friend took him home and then to the hospital. And he had um, his left ear, eardrum was ruptured and he had a tear uh, in his other ear and he had a fractured skull. So he would require multiple surgeries and lives with a hearing aid today. During his recovery, a pastor's network saw the video playing. It was on a closed Facebook page the, of that youth militia, the Hindu uh, Yava Vahini. Um, and the video was edited to make it look like he did renounce Christ. Well, the pastor's network knew that wasn't true. They knew already of the story. And so um, that led to those attackers' arrest. And then they were sentenced. Kabir's response was one, as you can imagine, gentleness. This is also what he said after he found out that they were arrested. I have grown in my faith and I will double the work. If it happens in the future, I am not scared. Whatever God wants, let him do. If I am here, I will keep doing the work. If I die, I go to his kingdom. 
he already knows. He already understands. His roots are in the kingdom of heaven. He's just here floating on the water, doing the work of God. And what a beautiful work it is, isn't it? Just amazing testimony. And it's been five years since his attack, and he has been faithful. He has actually, his church has grown. He has doubled the outreach that he has in the slums, has doubled, and he is going to two villages now instead of one. Blessed, blessed, right? That's what the Beatitudes are. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. What an amazing modern day history hero to exemplify that to us. Gentleness. God spared his life because, and he said, I will forgive those who demanded of me. Gentleness grows in the in demanding soil, in the soil of demands. May we all grow in gentleness. Well, I want to end and tell you that we are having, I have this right here. Here's one of our bags. This weekend, we're having our major fundraiser for, so pray for us, um, Friday evening in Mansfield at um, M1 Church. They were so gracious to donate the facility to us. We are having our major fundraiser. It's a purity conference called How Beautiful. And on the map boutique, we'll be selling items such as that. That's $8 at crossover. And everything, of course, goes to the missions trip. Right now, there's 10 people uh, that we're going to Kenya, as I've mentioned before. And we just um, want to help raise funds so that we can get there. And uh, I thank you for all your support. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace.